Hello, my name is Rick Statham. I'm the Joint Managing Director of uh, Safety and Access and I'm here today to talk to you about some new guidance developed by the National Access and Scaffolding Confederation. The National Access and Scaffolding Confederation, or NASC, are the industry body for the scaffolding and access industry within the UK. The NASC uh, have produced uh, many guidance notes over the years for different aspects of scaffolding and also for technical aspects of scaffolding as well. Uh, and this uh, guidance has generally been developed uh, in conjunction or with the support of the Health and Safety Executive and is regarded in m most areas as industry best practice. The guidance that we're here to talk about today is the guidance, which is new guidance as I say, for local authority pavement licensing. There's no doubt that work on or around the public highway presents many challenges to contractors undertaking the work. Hazards such as road traffic, members of the public, including pedestrian access, in and around the scaffold work area, all present hazards that have to be addressed before work can start. It is fact, however, that many scaffolds erected on or adjacent to the public highway do not actually conform to current best and most importantly safe practice. The NESC recently undertook some research in this area to assess the criteria of existing pavement licences used by local authorities and highway authorities within the UK. All were contacted and asked to submit a copy of their procedures for review and comment. From over 50 examples received, results showed there was actually no common approach to this across the UK. So in a bid to avoid unnecessary risk to workers and members of the public, the NESC have developed and published a very comprehensive guidance document for adoption by local authorities and highway agencies that have a responsibility for pavement licensing. This document includes best practice. Alarmingly from the examples received, some criteria for this type of work was simply as simple as uh, only asking for sufficient insurance to undertake the work. Some were definitely more complex than this, but none were to the standard now recommended by the NASC. The NESC have developed this national template that local authorities and highway agencies are urged to adopt to standardise scaffolding works within traffic and public interface and importantly to reduce the risks involved. The template, if followed, will ensure that contractors working within the procedures are working with the minimum standards accepted within industry today. But what are the key hazards? Well, scaffold collapse can be a hazard. Here are some examples of scaffolds that have collapsed on the public highway. These can be due to different types of circumstances. The inadequate planning of the scaffold or encroachment on the roadway could lead to collision. A scaffold could be overloaded, for example, by either the people using the scaffold or actually by the scaffold contractors whilst erecting or dismantling. A key effect of scaffold collapse can be the lack of ties and stability and often this is difficult to achieve when working upon the public highway because of the restrictions involved and more planning needs to be involved in that. Vehicle collision can obviously be a key risk when working on or adjacent to the public highway. If a scaffold encroaches upon the highway, the risk of a vehicle actually striking that scaffold obviously increases. Inadequate clearance distances are key here to wherever possible ensure that vehicles cannot impact upon the scaffolding. Lack of signs and lighting can also be a result uh, can also result in vehicles colliding with scaffolding if road users uh, are not aware of the scaffolds and the scaffolds are not uh, adequately highlighted. Falling objects, lifting operations and material control can also create risks to members of the public that may be passing scaffolds or vehicles that are nearby. Here we've got examples where some material whilst being lifted into place, scaffolding materials, were accidentally displaced and caused some serious damage to a vehicle. On the other, in the other image you can see the height from which uh, material could fall and we can actually see members of the public upon the street below. 
Scaffolding operations themselves can also present a key hazard. In order to set out a scaffold, to begin the erection of a scaffold on a public road, vehicles need to arrive carrying the material and that material needs to be erected upon the public highway. This can obviously have quite an adverse effect upon road users nearby and there can be partial road closures involved. And also, very, very important, if the scaffold encroaches upon the public highway or the pavement, there are members of the public that may have to be diverted um, and managed, the risk has to be managed and of course with members of the public this can include the increased uh, degree of risk uh, involving the elderly, the infirm, children and the disabled. So that's a key area. The guidance and application form template is regarded as a best practice document. It is in a format that can be edited by the user so the user is able to put in their own um, local requirements that may apply to scaffolding operations and also to introduce our own branding to that document. It outlines responsibilities for the organisation that is managing the scaffolding works. In other words, that would be the main contractor, uh, the principal contractor or the client as defined under CDM. Provided as an aid memoir, there is also a standard bank of questions to help establish any restrictions or actions required to ensure a safe system of work. The document also sets out some standard conditions. Most of all, the NESC consider this to be a simple and user-friendly guidance. So what does the guidance note uh, involve? Well, section one of the document is a scaffolding license application form. As I say, that can be altered by the user to suit their local requirements. Section 2 is a general set of terms and conditions that can be used in the agreement between the issuer and the acceptor of the scaffold licence. Section 3 provides comprehensive guidance upon the actual uh, operations of the scaffolding. And Section 4 provides uh, an administration form which is the arrangement and agreement between the issuer and the user of any cost that may be involved in the issue of a, a scaffolding license. There is a strong reference within the guidance section to industry standards. First of all the work at height work at high regulations within the UK provide key regulations for scaffolding. There's a European technical standard 12811 that is very relevant and there is very various NASC safety and technical guidance including TG20 which is for the design of scaffolding, there is TG4 regarding anchors of scaffolding to buildings and there is SG4 which is the system of work at height for scaffolders. There is also reference there to manufacturers instruction manuals for contractors that use proprietary system type scaffolding. Supply chain arrangements will also need to be considered to assess the competence and performance of the scaffolding contractor. Suitable questions to ask will be, is that scaffolding contractor regulated, such as a member of the NESC, or are there other levels of competence demonstrated through various means? Training of the people actually erecting and dismantling the scaffolding is key here. There is an established uh, training scheme within the UK, which is the CISRS, or the Construction Industry Scaffolders Record Scheme. It is actually the only nationally recognised scaffolding training scheme available at the moment. It goes without saying as well, and is referred to in the regulations, that scaffolding must be assembled, dismantled, dismantled or altered under the supervision of a competent person and by people who have had specific training. There is guidance in there upon the design requirements involved in scaffolding. These are quite onerous in the UK at the moment and there is an NESC uh, associated document named TG20 that goes with this. But the pavement licence document does give good indicators around stability and design of scaffolds. There is some guidance there for access and clearances required to ensure that members of the public and vehicles uh, are given adequate protection and uh, room to manoeuvre, etc. These can obviously be adapted to suit local requirements and on a job-to-job -job basis. Segregation and warning signs, there is guidance in there uh, which is very important to ensure that while the work is being erected and dismantled, 
that we keep the material and the system of work away from members of public and vehicles so far as is reasonable. Physical protection measures are obviously very important because whilst work is being undertaken on the public highway there is uh, obviously uh, some risk of maybe some material or debris that is accidentally displaced and could strike a vehicle or a member of the public. Some of the protection measures may also include um, lighting, both during construction and during its use. The lighting uh, is obviously available not only for vehicles but also for members of the public and clear uh, guidelines need to be established around that. There is also some guidance in there on security and restricted access uh, onto scaffolds whilst they're in use. Physical protection measures, for example, on the photograph that you see there, you can see that the scaffold has a fan protection erected above the uh, pavement that can deflect and catch any debris that may accidentally become displaced. And in the actual illustrated uh, image there, you can see a standard design suggestion for a pavement gantry that provides full protection from any uh, accidentally displaced debris or material from above. Other con conditions that are referred to in the document, very important conditions, traffic management, for example, maintenance and inspection of scaffold structures, which is a legal requirement in the UK. Foundations of a scaffold, so the base has to be properly prepared for any scaffold that's erected and suitable, obviously. Uh, and scaffold plans, otherwise known as method statements, that the people organising the work need to be in receipt of to ensure that there is an effective um, system of work for the erection and dismantle of scaffolding. The NESC offer this document to interested parties at no cost. Um, regulatory authorities uh, are urged to adopt this as best practice and are encouraged to use this. The NESC will continue to work with interested parties and stakeholders to improve the safety of scaffolding structures when provided on or near the public highway and to further raise safety standards. If you would like any further information uh, on this subject, please do not hesitate to contact the NESC on the web address shown. Thank you for listening.